Hi, welcome. When we search quickly about chess, normally we find always the same kind of persons, the usual suspects. We find Magnus Carlsen, Pragnananda, uh, Anand, uh, Caruana, etc. Uh, normally we associate these guys to chess, the greatest of all times, like Bobby Fischer or even um, Alekhine, uh, they all represent chess. Ding Liren, the Gukesh, Firuza, the youngsters. And when we talk about them, we look at their ages and uh, normally they are on their uh, mid thirties or the youngest, the, the prodigies with 17 or 18 years old. And we, uh, we, we learn from them and they have levels that are impressive. But today I won't talk about them. I want to talk you, uh, talk you, <laughs> talk to you about um, a living legend. He was born at 1921, uh, and on those days uh, it wasn't possible, for example, to drink alcohol. Uh, Einstein was alive and was winning the Nobel Prize. Uh, it happened the first uh, Miss America, for example. So, uh, very uh, interesting stuff because it has been too long. Because nowadays, this guy is 102 years old. I'm talking about a living legend. It has been written several artic articles about him. Chess.com has created one and even the International Federation. I'm talking about Manuel Alvarez Escudero. He is Spanish and this guy with a very advanced age he still competes and is one of the most active players on his age. So with 99 years old, he has won a veteran competition in Spain. So it's truly impressive. I have been searching about the oldest uh, players on the planet, and we have nowadays um, 45 players with uh, 200 or uh, and two or 203 years uh, and Escudero is the second highest rating player of them all. Uh, the first one, uh, Tashijian, is Canadian, but he, he has um, uh, just um, one uh, official rating uh, on the last month, I think. So we don't have much material about him. But uh, when he reaches 104, uh, I will try to create some content about him because uh, I think he is inspirational too. Uh, I would like to learn more about him. So talking a little bit about Escudero. Uh, Escudero uh, at his peak at 2160 uh, rating, so he was almost national master, and he, well, he, he was quite strong because he has won at uh, I think 1985 uh, grandmaster. So he was a very strong player. He is still a very a strong player, but of course. Nowadays, with this age, uh, his rating is dropping, of course, it's natural. Uh, and he is uh, right now with, I think, 16th uh, 10 of rating. So, um, well, it's a great, a great rating because it isn't uh, easy to continue playing with this age. So he is truly an insp inspiration. So... About his opponent, we will see two of his games. The first one uh, has been played at 2000 um, with Emilio Ferrer. 
he, he was 79 years old and Ferrer was 33 years old. On the second game, he, he was playing with Black, we will see, uh, against Luis Camunas. Luis Camunas, I think, at, uh, uh, the, play, the game uh, has been played at um, 222 and Camunas was 74 years old and, of course, Manuel was 101 years old when he played with Luis Camunas. So he has won both games and of course we will analyze the, the two games and uh, in the end we will see the precision to, to see if he is a good player because the second game has been played last year, so it's recent. So let's go. Uh, the first game has been played at uh, the year 2000 and, well, he is um, playing with White and on those days at 2000 he was um, with uh, 21 for, uh, 45 and his opponent was with uh, 21 15. So they were uh, great players and here uh, we will see uh, Karokan, because Black uh, is playing c6 after d5 uh, here. Escudero will continue with the exchange, exchange variation. And after takes takes, knight f and knight f. I don't enjoy very much this variation, but the way as Manuel Escudero will continue, it's kind of interesting because normally when we study the, um, the exchange variation uh, everyone uh, recommends this kind of setup with bishop d3 because uh, when we play bishop to d3 the bishop is more versatile so um, it looks more correct uh, because we don't want to exchange the bishop or else we will have problems at the light squares but here escudero will uh, opt to exchange the bishop and after knight takes uh, he will castle and after b5 the idea for black it's kind of easy and interesting too uh, black wants to play on the king side and wants to um, do a minor minority attack so the idea is to try to uh, create a backwards uh, pawn and um, try to explore this debility. So here Escudero will continue with rook e1 and after e6 h3 I don't like very much because here we are losing a tempo and it's not necessary because it doesn't exist a bishop but I don't want to criticize because we are analyzing a game on 2000 and he was already 79 years old so Great level, great, great level, and great rating too, uh, because I am uh, 38 and my rating is 2000, so it's lower than that. So continuing, uh, continuing here, black has continued with rook c8. It makes sense because rook is um, uh, playing for an open file. And after um, a3, is trying to close the queen side. He doesn't want this to continue. And of course, queen c7, black is slightly better. And after c3, bishop to d6. Um, it makes sense. And even h6 or b bishop e7 too. Uh, this is all playable for black. So in this uh, part of the game, black is slightly better. But Escudero will do some interesting tactical moves because here bishop and after castle kingside he will play knight he is develop developing his pieces he's continued with knight to b6 the idea is to try to uh, play the knight to c4 why is that good simple after this if knight takes b takes and this pawn is a problem because black will try to explore this file with the rooks and the queen so this continued with knight e5 and the idea is a tactical one if bishop takes knight pawn takes queen takes we have bishop takes knight attacking the queen with the rook so very interesting so of course black uh, cannot take or 
will lose the game. And here, uh, Black has played knight to c4. For me, it's a correct idea. This continued with queen b3. Queen b3 is interesting, but doesn't solve the problem. Here, probably the best uh, would be just to play knight to knight d3 and try to probably f4, play f4. I don't know if it's playable. Uh, before that, we need to um, to solve the problems with the bishop, probably with knight d3, queen e2, f4, and if knight takes, uh, this is protected by the knight, and if knight takes, the queen takes back. So I think probably this is playable. I, I'm not sure, but uh, here uh, he has played queen to b3, and after a6, he will continue with the knight to d3. This continued with bishop check and after king uh, goes to h1 he will play uh, knight takes. I don't like very much this move because in my opinion the black knight is very well placed on this square. So probably better would be just to play the bishop back or even play h6 to uh, block the, the square on g5. We don't want the bishop to, to go here. So uh, here he exchanges and well right now black has lost uh, most of his the advantage so for me this is already uh, playable for white so after knight went to e4 of course the idea of black is uh, to pray for the knight to go elsewhere and take the pawn with checkmate because the bishop is being protected by the queen and um, of course here he protected with a second piece you want to be paranoid with uh, your king because you want your king to be well protected so we've already talked about the back rank mate for example we want to be paranoid about the defense even if you're an attacking player I'm attacking and I need to be always concerned with the defense. So continuing, here he um, has played the bishop back and after a4, this idea it's playable and interesting. Uh, another um, could, uh, variation could be just to play back the king to g1, but probably white will be playing for a draw. And even uh, try to play on the king side because we we have some potential uh, potential on this side because our pawn structure is pointing to the king side. So continuing here, he has made this move, and after queen uh, plays to c4, it's very important not to take because if queen takes, we we are lost because b takes, and this is. A permanent problem for white so we don't want to to have a backward uh, backwards I think it's correct pawn so here uh, he has made the move queen d1 it's necessary to try to reallocate the queen to the king side and after b4 here black is uh, creating pressure on the queen side this continued with pawn takes needs to to be done and after bishop takes Rook to c1 and white is already better. Why is that? Simple, because this move, in reality, it's an imprecision. Because after pawn takes, we don't want to take back because the queen doesn't have any square to go away after rook c1. So, for example, what could uh, he has um, done? He, he could made this move. And then he will try to take the pawn because this pawn isn't um, defendable in my opinion. It isn't easy to defend this pawn because it's doubled, so it's complicated. Uh, so here, when he takes, of course, rook c1 and this isn't possible, this isn't available too, and this one isn't available. Available. This one, the knight is protected, uh, protected by the queen. So here, this is only interesting move for black but of course right now this position is already lost for emilio ferrer so of course rook takes pawn takes and after knight takes because if queen takes of course pawn takes knight um the position is completely won so this will continue with uh rook takes pawn and after king goes to h2 the game will finish in six moves so pawn advances knight always uh, put your pieces to the center, don't forget, and 
knights to c5. Uh, this will finish with another tactical idea. So takes takes. Now white has a uh, passed pawn and here Manuel Escudero is simplifying very well the game. So this continued with the advancing of the pawn and after bishop attacks rook of course this move it's the last try for black but here Escudero has a very 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 nice detail. If you want you can put on pause because here black will resign with the move queen to e1. Why uh, black resigns? Quite, it's quite simple because after rook takes queen takes pawn and i will take one of the rooks because uh, if king goes here i give check and take the rook and if king goes here i have this idea too so very very interesting game by uh, manuel escudero so we've already seen the first game but now we need to prove that manuel escudero isn't just a guy with 102 years old that plays chess. So this game has been played at 2000, so he was 79 years old. Uh, but what was his level? Has he played well? Let's see. So in this game, let's go. Uh, the screen is this one, sorry. And let's see, review. Okay, 96.7 and his opponent almost 88%. We are talking about a game with a very high this, uh, precision. 29,000. Uh, so, uh, 100, sorry. So, this is quite good. Even his opponent has played with 2,500. So, this has been very well played by, by both players. Of course, the resume of the game uh, is that Black has made two big mistakes. One of them is considered a blunder because he will lose the queen. But now we need to prove that Escudero still play good chess. And right now his rating is on 1600. Uh, and uh, I've chosen a game that has been played on the last year. So let's jump to the game. So don't forget, if you aren't subscribed, you need to subscribe, push the like button, and uh, if you have some suggestion or idea, critics, uh, put on the com comments below because I want to help you to improve faster. And with that, I will try to increase my level uh, too, so let's see. Well, let's jump to the next game. So, the second game has been played on the last year, and okay, uh, the, the rating is uh, different. Escudero at 1627, uh, and his opponent 1377. So, with his peak at, uh, at 1400, I think, so it's, it's a different level, of course. And um, Escudero is playing with black, and let's start. So, here, d4, e4, e5, knight, and d6. Of course, if I was playing with white, I would play d4, but okay. Here, white has continued with h3. This is a veteran competition. So I think uh, Luis Camunas uh, is uh, 75 years old right now. I think, I'm not sure. And uh, Escudero was with 101. Now he has 102 years old. It's incredible to play at this level. So he has played F5. So aggressive stuff. I like that. So here, uh, white continues with knight c3. And after knight f6, this Philidor, it's an LT one, I think, uh, that uh, Manuel Escudero is playing. So this continued with d3, and after bishop e7 is developing correctly all the pieces. Bishop g5, castle king side, and bishop e2. This, right now, 
we can already see that uh, the bishop on e2 it isn't very happy because is um, cannot play because because of the, the the knight and the pawn. So this continued with knight c6 and after bishop takes bishop takes uh, knight will uh, play to d5 to try to create some pressure on the center center uh, center and try to probably exchange for the bishop. So this continued with pawn takes and after pawn takes knight goes to e7 uh okay knight e7 isn't a problem but probably i would play king uh, h8 just to see if knight takes because because if knight takes queen takes and black is already better because i'm assuming that white will castle kingside so this continued with knight and after knight takes rook takes of course the other the other line probably uh, would be better. Uh, bishop um, placed, played to c4 and bishop went to e6. This continued with takes takes and after castle, kingside, queen d7, knight h4. Try to prevent the lateralization of the knights because okay the idea is to try to put the knight to f5 but black doesn't have any problem to take. Of course we need to be careful with the checks but uh, it's black to play so after rook h6 for me knight f5 is already a problem this ha hasn't played hasn't been played because takes takes and takes and even this kind of lines uh okay this is playable but queen e6 and if queen takes probably this is all uh, playable for black change to one central pawn by uh, other that uh, isn't so let's continue knight f3 and queen to e6 this continued with the knight attacking and what is the problem of the white player is that he isn't improving his position he is doing quick uh, threats and when you play chess you want to use all of your pieces all of your potential to create problems to your opponent so here if you see manuel escudero as strong uh, technical bases, tactical bases, and he is always improving his position. So right now the position is uh, close. Uh, so it, it it is close, but I I think it is already easier for Black to play this this position. So this continued with G3 and after King H8 because of ideas uh, of Queen Check. Uh, White will continue with king g2 and after rook h5 threatening to take the knight, white will play knight to e6. This continued with rook c to protect the pawn and after queen takes, knight takes, f4, pawn takes, knight takes and here they will exchange almost everything. So here we will evaluate the level of uh, 102 years old in the end game. So this continued with rook c creating pressure on the pawn that is on c2 and after c3 he will play the king to prevent um, rook f7. This continued with rook, rook, king and rook. Of course this kind of stuff was already possible but okay. Uh, he is uh, creating pressure on the pawn, probably he is trying to advance his pawn, to, to sack the pawn, to try to give checks. Uh, these are all ideas. Because of that, white has played c4. And after g5, too aggressive, here, uh, this is already, this is equal, but this is already complicated because, of course, if rook plays here, the rook is lost, so this isn't a good move for white. Uh, so this is the only move. And of course, after rook takes, rook takes, king h8, it's uh, mandatory to play that. Uh, king went to g2 and rook takes pawn. Of course, this is still equal because white can play just rook f7. But this hasn't been played. So here, white has played rook to f5. And it makes all the difference because if this rook has been played here, the, rule, the rook would be on the seventh uh, rank and the game would be completely equal. Uh, just to show, for example, rook check, it's possible, and king f3. And 
this check doesn't ex exist just to show if rook takes i just play rook here and i will draw repeating uh, the rook uh, to h and g so it's a quick draw but white has failed this move and after rook f5 now this checks already wins the game because after rook rook he will exchange everything and why is that bad for white this is bad because here manuel escudero is winning by one pawn so this is a one uh, possession uh, with uh, so much pawns and with this past pawn this is an easy end game but imagine if you just add one pawn against uh, none and your, your king uh, it wasn't possible to put your king in front of the pawn the game would be draw so with more pawns it's easier to win this kind of end game so this continued with h4 h5 this 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 is correct completely correct because uh, this pawn is blocking two pawns of course this probably would be the only idea for white to try to create some um, asymmetries and uh, complications but this would be uh, one two so it isn't uh, possible to draw this possession this continued with king and after king uh, plays to e6 here of course Rich Camunas has resigned because it isn't possible to draw this position it's just too strong so very interesting game and this one he already at 101 years old and of course the rating is slightly different but what was his precision this is a good question what do you think let's see well in this game, uh, Manuel Escudero had a similar precision, not so high as the first game we analyzed, but well, this has been played more than 20 uh, past 20 years. So in this game, Manuel Escudero has played with the result is oh, okay sorry is uh, yeah it's correct uh manuel escudero has played with 19.1 percent and luis camunas has played with 85.4 this means that uh, according to chess.com uh he played for 2000 and um uh, camunas has played to uh, 1850 rating so uh, this is very interesting stuff and in my opinion uh, Manuel Escudero is a living legend and I would like to do more content about him in the fu future so I'm thinking about probably uh, to put another video when he wins another competition of course it isn't easy and we all know that he is already with 102 years old but i would like to see uh, a game of him with 104 or even 105 years old and compare with these uh, games i hope that uh, manuel escudero has a strong health uh, in the future and i hope he continues competing every day and every month uh, i hope all uh, of him uh, i hope him all the luck and i hope you enjoyed this video it's quite uh, different and we've seen the second highest world play player for plus than 100 years old i would like to know if you think you will be uh, player so strong as him with this age in my opinion <laughs> my dream is to reach this age uh, probably i won't be able to play chess but hmm, i don't know what do you think about that well i hope you enjoyed till tomorrow tomorrow at the same hour i will be here to give you more stuff about about chess till tomorrow have a good night bye bye <laughs>